we know that to break human limits and achieve extremely ambitious goals like Mars colonization, Elon Musk has made the Starship rocket, unlike anything we have seen before. Yeah, it's not only a story about its gigantic size as well as its impressive specifications, but also about the secret details inside that promise to blow your mind. So, in today's episode of TechMap, Let's find out the operational mechanism of propellant flow inside the booster. From that, we can explain why Booster 9 exploded in Flight 2. Obviously, Starship's evolution flow never stops, and perhaps what I list in this video will not be accurate 100% for the next generation of the rocket. But keep in mind that all upgrades come from the fundamental things. So. Let's take, for example, the most basic prototype that has been the most successful so far, the pair of Ship 25 and Booster 9. This couple was the main character in Flight No. 2 last November and was the first prototype of Starship to successfully conquer the hot stage technique. In Flight 2 or any flight, at the time of the booster engine cutoff, the outer and middle engines ceased operation leaving only the three inner gimbal engines active. Thus, the booster's speed slowed down. At that time, the fuel was neatly pushed to the bottom of the tank. However, the chaos just began to appear at T plus 250, with six engines on Ship 25 ignited, forcing the booster to stay far away. The violent force of the ship's engines acting on the front of the booster resulted in the sloshing of the liquid inside the tank, just like how you apply a slight force to a cup to make the water inside start to flow around. Honestly, the booster and its propellant suffered the same forces in this case, but inertial forces within the liquid were affected more by any sudden changes in acceleration. Therefore, that inertial force could create slips of varying amplitude or, in worse cases, cause the liquid to completely separate from the tank wall. After stage separation, the boost back burn occurred on the booster. Shortly after that, the propellant starts settling pretty quickly. To explain this phenomenon, at the boost back burn, the other Raptor gimbal engines were activated, gradually restoring power and thrust to the booster, initiating its acceleration once again. However, at this point, the booster's thrust countered the movement of the weightless fuel that had just previously splashed. At that time, the estimated fuel remaining for booster 9 was roughly 12%, equivalent to 408 tons of liquid in the bottom. However, imagine what would happen if that 408 tons of propellant hit the bottom of the tank or impacted surrounding parts. This phenomenon is called fuel sloshing and its negative impacts might be more serious than you think. Fuel sloshing in rockets occurs due to the movement of liquid propellants inside the fuel tanks during the vehicle's acceleration, deceleration, or maneuvers. As the rocket accelerates or changes direction, the liquid fuel experiences inertia, creating waves or oscillations within the tank. This sloshing effect can impact the rocket's stability and control. Engineers employ baffles, flexible liners, or other design features to minimize fuel slosh, ensuring precise control during flight. Reducing slosh-induced disturbances is crucial for maintaining the rocket's trajectory and stability especially in critical phases such as launch, orbit insertion, or maneuvers. Both the fuel tank and the fuel inlet are under immense pressure from tons of fuel. The continuous generation of opposing forces resulted in severe sloshing of the fuel against the fuel supply lines. Additionally, the intense vibrations caused the fuel to create numerous gas bubbles, which harm important components such as fuel supply lines, turbines, fuel inlets, and pre-combustion elements. These forces were potent enough to cause damage to the engine systems, particularly the vulnerable structures like the pipes. Those gas bubbles also might enter the engine's fuel supply line, consequently causing damage to the engine itself. Damage in one place will spread to another. This was clearly shown in the case of Booster 9 when the engines turned off one by one in a domino effect, compelling SpaceX to activate the self-destruct sequence to terminate the booster's journey around T plus 320. As far as I know, SpaceX has not explained clearly how they will handle the above issues, but we can show the possible prediction. First of all, vulnerable parts within the fuel tank, particularly the fuel supply line, need to be reinforced to withstand the rigorous pressures and impacts experienced during flight and separation. Secondly, 
The application of the hot stage technique requires the meticulous review of sensitive components like tank domes aiming to prevent leaks and failures, common issues in various rocket systems. This involves addressing the effects of the second stage's engine exhaust on the booster during separation. These improvements will be implemented not only in the current prototypes participating in subsequent flights, including Super Heavy and Starship, but also in the upcoming version, Starship V2. Elon Musk has said that version 2 of the ship holds more propellant, reduces dry mass, and improves reliability. The reliability improvement involves fortifying the tank and fuel lines. Although Super Heavy hasn't been explicitly mentioned, SpaceX might undertake similar enhancements, with particular emphasis on the booster due to its heightened exposure during the separation process. These measures aim to ensure the next flight proceeds seamlessly and surmounts the unforeseen challenges encountered previously. Along with the improvement in hardware, the upgrade of engines will be continued. In November 2023, Elon Musk hinted at a new type of Raptor engine that is robust enough not to require a heat shield, will also have more thrust, higher ISP, and many other improvements. The removal of the heat shield could demonstrate that previously sensitive engine systems like injectors, pipes, and wiring have been sufficiently reinforced to not require protective shields. This advancement aims to counteract in-flight impacts, including those from fuel sloshing. Next, before going any further, if you found this information useful, remember to subscribe to the channel and enable notifications to stay up to date with the latest news from SpaceX and the world of space. And now let's go back to today's episode. One more interesting tidbit, fuel sloshing occurs not only with rockets, but also with aircraft. Like in any other tank filled with liquid aircraft, fuel tanks are also prone to sloshing during flight. While aircraft are typically stable throughout the flight, roll maneuvers, hard landings, and significant turbulence during cruise can cause the fuel to slosh around the tank. Significant sloshing can shift the center of gravity CG, especially when the fuel quantity is reduced, typically during the latter part of the flight. Theoretically, a substantial shift in CG due to fuel sloshing can cause an uncontrollable pitch-up, leading to a stall. In most commercial aircraft, fuel is also stored in wing tanks to achieve aircraft stability while utilizing the available space. There are several reasons why many modern aircraft designers have elected to place the primary fuel tanks in the wings. An aircraft's wing contains a significant amount of extra space not used for storage, is easily accessible, and is responsible for creating lift for the entire airframe. Placing the fuel in the wings also increases the strength and stability of the aircraft during takeoff and leaves room for additional cargo capacity. When considering the aerodynamics of an aircraft, the wings are directly responsible for creating lift, which supports the fuselage during flight. On some long-haul flights, the fuel contained in the aircraft at takeoff can account for as much as a third of the aircraft's gross weight. If this extra weight were to be stored entirely in the fuselage, it would reduce available cargo space and increase the strain and stress on the aircraft structure. Loading the fuel into the wings brings a significant portion of the weight directly to the source of lift, which reduces the pressure on the wings in flight and spreads the load more evenly across the airframe. Fuel is generally stored close to the CG in the longitudinal pitching direction. That means most of the fuel is held near the wing root and in the fuselage section between the wings. This prevents great changes in the CG as fuel is consumed during flight. The effects of sloshing closer to the CG can be balanced with minimal impact. Wing fuel tanks are also subdivided into sections baffled design to reduce sloshing. These limit the amount of area available for the liquid to move, preventing large changes during maneuvers. The shift in CG within a single section is much less than in a larger tank. Large metal or composite plates prevent fuel from flowing across. The sectional design of the wing tanks also helps in spanwise direction to avoid high loads on wing ribs as the aircraft rolls. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you and we look forward to seeing you next time.